Time for my Wonderfest video. I've got a couple interviews, a look at a TIE Bomber kit, and a slideshow coming up on Hot Off The Bench. Well, hey everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Hot Off The Bench. This one is devoted to Wonderfest, which took place uh, last weekend, and it uh, took me a little time to get this video together. I had to get caught up with a bunch of other stuff here, uh, but I'm finally able to post this here for you. And I attended the show, and very happy that I did. Um, I wasn't sure what kind of turnout they would have, but uh, I think the show was quite the success. Uh, they had well over 700 models on display. I know that falls a little short of the 800 to something that was on display there a couple years ago, but given the circumstances, I think the show really was a success. And it was a lot of fun to attend. I uh, always uh, am amazed at the, um, at the type of work that's on display there, and if you haven't made it to a Wonderfest, how you would recommend that you do that at some point, uh, you will be you know, astounded by the stuff that's on display there. Uh, and just a lot of other fun events going on as well. Now, I usually get these videos uh, started with a slideshow, but after putting all the pictures together, uh, the slideshow is over five minutes, so I thought I would put that at the end. Uh, I know there's a lot of pictures already posted uh, from Wonderfest there, so uh, I think what I'll do is I'll start off the uh, video here with a couple of interviews. Uh, the first interview is with uh, a gentleman by the name of Jamie Hood from Round 2, and uh, he was able to get me caught up on some of their new releases, uh, which they announced the 148 scale Hawk from Space 1999, which I wasn't aware they were working on that. And they had a uh, prototype of the display, uh, uh, of the model on display there. And uh, so Jamie's going to fill us in on that, as well as the upcoming release of the uh, Comlock and uh, Space 1999 stun gun. And uh, there are some Star Trek uh, releases, and they are also working on some Star Wars models too. So let's uh, get caught up here with Jamie Hood. From round two. All right, guys, we're walking around here again uh, during the early bird time here. Uh, I was able to catch um, Jamie Hood here from round two. Hi, Jamie. Hi, hey, good to see you. Thanks for being on. You bet. All right. So, um, a lot of my subscribers are so excited about all the products you've come out uh, recently. Uh, can you tell me, um, first of all, let's talk about the Space 1999 stuff. You've got to be a huge fan. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I've grown to love it for sure. Yeah. Uh, once you start you're really digging into these ships and and studying them for accuracy and things like that, you really get to know them inside and out. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how well you love it, yeah. when you get this deep into it, you're gonna know it. So oh, absolutely, a lot of a lot of us really appreciate all the detail you put into the Eagle. And so tell us a little bit about some of the new stuff coming out now. You've got like um, first of all the stun gun and the comlock. Right, uh, that's being it's in production right now. So look for that probably towards the end of summer. Mm -hmm. So it should reach us by then. But uh, yeah, we've got a, a built nice built up on the table. Mm -hmm. So everybody here. The show can see it. Great. Everybody's excited to see that one-to-one uh, -one studios replica of the, the, the props from the show. We've tried to improve it because we're putting clear parts that weren't clear on the original props. Yeah. So if somebody wants to take it to the next level and light them, you know, all the different buttons will light up. You can yeah. uh, put an LED behind each of the laser beams and stuff like that. So yeah, it's kind of cool. great. Now I noticed, I uh, couldn't help but notice the, the larger scale hawk there you've got on the table. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. We We've got the uh, 48 skill uh, hawk, well, 48 skill, depending on your opinion on uh -huh. these kinds of things. Um, yeah, everybody, everybody's been clamoring for it for the longest time. Everybody wanted the 22 inch eagle and a, a hawk in the same scale. So, yeah. time was right. Uh, we went ahead and we actually put more work into this than we did actually the, the 70 second scale one obviously um, some errors were brought to my attention so I wanted to make sure those were cleaned up <laughs> so uh, at the bigger yeah. scale these things are more noticeable so I wanted to make sure it's right oh yeah absolutely so let's move on to some of the Star Trek uh, uh, models that are coming out uh, let's talk about Voyager real quick the beautiful um, replica of the ship uh, much better I would say better detail I've built the monogram a couple of times uh, can you tell us a little about that model yeah, it, it, I, I gotta be honest, it, that was a struggle to deal with because um, it was a case where we didn't really have definitive plans for the ship. And uh, unlike some of the other uh, ships we do, like anything from Discovery working from CG models from the, uh, the studio, uh, when we're doing things dealing with the original series, usually we get nice plans from Gary Kerr. In this case, it was more of taking bits of information from here and there, uh, studying photographs a lot, comparing 
the, the, the existing models, the, band, the old Bandai model, the, uh, the monogram model, and figuring out, okay, what did they get right, what did they get wrong, what are we going to pick up on? So uh, I think the result is, is awesome. Though. I think we've done a good job of making sure it's as accurate as we can get it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's, it's one of those, it was, it was a missing ship. I mean, we hadn't touched, the whole time we've had the Star Trek license, we haven't done anything from Voyager. It's a capital ship, it's a thousand scale, it fits right in the lines. So. Yeah. yeah, and I love how you have the landing gear. I, you know, I always thought that ship was a bit awkward and, and it never seemed like it would balance properly on landing gear. Did you guys have any issues with that? You know, as I was putting it together, the test shot together, and putting the landing gear under it, I'm like, this thing's going to be top heavy. It's yeah. going to fall where it snows. And I set it down, and it set just perfect. Perfectly. There you balanced. go. Starfleet knew what they were doing, I guess. I guess yeah. so. <laughs> and then I, I saw the Grissom then. It's a larger version of it then. Yeah. yeah. So we're doing the Grissom in, th in 1350 scale. Uh, another fan favorite ship design yeah. uh, then people have been climbing for it for years as well so yeah. finally bringing that to market uh, we had uh, Charles Adams who had supplied the Klingon Katinga data for us mm -hmm. uh, we hired him contracted him to to do the CAD from start to finish so yeah. uh, again he worked from a lot of uh, photographs and some measurements he got and uh, yeah I think it's it's spot on I don't, I don't think you get more accurate than what that is that's fantastic well thanks for spending a few minutes with us here I know that you guys do uh, occasional videos on YouTube whenever you release new products so I'll definitely put the link down to that for you guys so you guys keep up on stuff that's happening at round two thanks thanks for being on yeah all right thanks again Jamie for giving us all that great information I definitely look forward to all these great new releases now um, I didn't uh, spend any time with talking to him about the Star Wars models on camera but I did ask him about that before leaving the table and uh, as you see here on the table there are some Star Wars models there on display uh, including, as you can see, the uh, artwork from the old uh, 70s releases. Uh, and he mentioned that uh, they are going to be re-releasing those models, uh, but the other thing they're going to be doing is they're going to be looking at each of those models uh, individually to see if there's something that they can do to improve them. So uh, it sounds like they're going to be uh, making some additional parts or some uh, maybe some changes there to the models to make them a bit better than they were when they originally were released. And of course the other exciting news is the uh, Razor Crest from the Mandalorian. I definitely look forward to that. It is going to be a 172 scale model of the ship. So uh, as I mentioned in the video there, Round 2 does have a YouTube channel and they occasionally will do some special events on their channel including some live streams. I know that they did that when they uh, were announcing the USS Voyager and the Comlock and Space 1999 stun gun. They did those at the same time there on a live stream and uh, you have the opportunity to talk to him as well as a couple other people that they had there on the panel. So check out the link below. Um, they also will post uh, regular uh, updates on their products as well. All right, well now I have this interview uh, with a gentleman by the name of Tom Eilerman. He's a guy I met a couple of years ago at Wonderfest. At the time, he was promoting the packaging materials that he produces for these large-scale models like the 148-scale Eagle and the 1350-scale Enterprise. I know it can be uh, a little nerve-wracking when you're trying to uh, transport a model like that, whether you're transporting it to a show or maybe you've done a commission build. Um, so he does produce uh, those types of packaging materials. But at the time, I met him a couple years ago, he was also in the process of working on a display for the 1350 scale Enterprise, which he now has available. So let's get caught up with Tom and see what he has to tell us about that new stand. Okay, one of the things I'm doing here is I'm catching up with Tom Eilerman. You might recall a couple years ago when I was here, he was just uh, in the process of making a stand for the beautiful 1350 scale Enterprise. So I'd like to just stop by here and, and ask uh, Tom what's been going on with his product and uh, tell us a little bit of it now that it's fully designed. Yeah, we finally actually got the thing up and running after Steve had printed a prototype for me two years ago. Then I had another company print an ABS uh, 3D model for me. We used that. We sent a caster down in Texas, Chris Lynch from uh, Raven Studios or Raven Star Studios. So um, he did a good job finishing the model up for me. And then they did the first cast on it. Yeah. We, we ran 20 of them. I sold 10 of them in the first week that we 
got them out. Sales have slowed down a little bit, but I, I've had some good interest at the show, and uh, I think as time goes on, you know, they're going to sell more. It's a, it's an investment. It's a hundred eighty dollar investment, but you know, it's for putting your electronics in it. Uh, it's a you know, I I got a pre built the other week to mount on, so we had one for the display, and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it came out really good. Yeah, I actually made another Delta without the speaker grills in it, so that you know, if you had a model that was not lit and no sound in it, you wouldn't yeah. have the, the grills exposed. So yeah. Yeah. give it a little bit of options there for yeah. it. Yeah, and that's why I want to emphasize it's not just a stand. It actually has speakers in it. Um, and uh, what kind of sounds does it uh, make? Well, um, depending on... This was designed off of ten, Ralph Tennis boards, so he's got some different you know, phasers, background oh, okay. music, whatever sure. you want to put effects. to it, S sound yeah. effects. Uh -huh. But uh, Simon Merckx did a first build with the bass, and it turned out real good. He had a dual board in it, so he had the sound effects. He had you know phasers and all the other ship sounds going. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and he split it off between the two speakers, which was nice. Right. But you know with this bass, we made it so that they can put all of the control boards inside here. Oh, I said I see. that's for the TOS board. It's the Mega board. This is a yeah. phaser board. So there's plenty of room for other manufacturers' boards. They just have to do a little fabrication right. to mount them. So. Right. Yeah. So all specifically designed for all the boards to fit in there. Then. Yeah. yeah that's great. It's done, and you know, then you screw your your uh, stainless steel on. Mm -hmm. So there's all the areas have it. They come stock with one with five holes in for your lights and buttons, or you can put a blank on it like I did on here. As you choose to go like the uh, uh, remote control versus sure. a you know the yeah, button. Actual buttons. Yeah, that works works out well. So okay. I've given them some options. They come, you know, we this is the top phones they come in. You've got all your hardware that comes in. Mm -hmm. You've got all the different stainless parts that come with it. If a person is going to order one of these and they don't want the grill, they need to let me know so that I can switch them out before we send them. Okay, great. Fantastic. And uh, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, they, we've got a Facebook page. Uh, of course, uh, uh, is um, Nebula Shipyard the other one is the 1350 aftermarket uh, Starship base group. Okay. Those are the two main ways that they get a hold of me. And then my uh, uh, website is ridgetechsolutions.com, and uh, you can put that in the video later on for them. Yeah, great. And most people just send me an email, and then we Sounds pay good. pal and ship it out then. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the 1350 scale enterprise is in itself an investment. You put not only investment of money, but all your time into making it a beautiful ship, and it's just great to have a stand that goes along with that. That's yeah. definitely good. All right, Tom. Thank, thanks. Thanks, uh -huh. Logan. So thanks again, Tom, for spending a few minutes here to tell us about that stand. And if you'd like to more information, the links are below. Now, I have to say, one of the most enjoyable things for me is uh, meeting people at the show who uh, either are subscribers of the channel or I've corresponded with for a number of years on Facebook and we finally get to meet in person. So first of all, I just want to thank you for taking the time to do that. It really is a pleasure to meet you guys and it is one of the highlights really for me of the show. Uh, there's a gentleman that I'd like to introduce you to. His name is Jason Chadwell. Uh, this is a guy who's a uh, graphic designer and uh, last year he decided to do more with 3D printing because he started to get into it and he's, he wanted to see what he could do to design some STL files. So with a program called Tinkercad, uh, he told me that a lot of people dismissed this program as being too simplistic. He was actually able to work extensively with it to design STL files. So let me, let me show you some screenshots of uh, Moss Eisley Modelworks and I think you're going to be pleased with what you're going to see here. Uh, so these are files that um, are meant to upgrade your Star Wars model kits with. And you can see there's a variety of items that he has available. Uh, one that I love a lot is this uh, reactor room for the uh, Death Star that you can use with your 1350 scale Millennium Falcon. So very, very creative. Uh, some really nice stuff. As you can see, if you go through uh, the site, you'll see some strong positive reviews about the quality of stuff that he's producing there. And, uh, you know, one of the things that... Uh, uh, has happened now is he's had a number of people ask him about whether he produces model kits, uh, you know, just model kits, complete model kits that you can buy from him. And, uh, and that's what he's done with this TIE bomber that he provided me a model kit for just to look at. And uh, he actually uh, did display it at the show uh, along with another one. Uh, these are some shots of the models that he uh, showed there. 
And uh, as I open the box, I've already taken a peek at it. I was very impressed with the level of detailing. So let's take a minute to take a look inside this box, and I think you'll be equally impressed. So one comment I did see on the Etsy site is that the models come nicely packed. You can see it did a good job with that. Okay, so here's the kit unpacked now, and as you take a closer look, you can see the beautiful detailing that he's included here. Um, he's done what he could to look at screenshots and been meticulous about the detailing trying to get the piece to look as close to the models that we see on screen. You see the beautiful panel lines you see on the main fuselage. We've got some pieces for the uh, interior, including seats. And uh, this is the front panel of the main instrument panel there for the cockpit. We've got the window. And some other pieces showing some nice detailing here as well. And it's all ready for you to assemble and paint. And he also provides instructions, and you can contact him at his shop there if you have any other questions. So yeah, some really cool stuff, and Jason, thanks for taking the time to uh, let me know about this, because this is uh, stuff that I think a lot of us uh, would really enjoy working with, and uh, so I provided the link to Moss Eisley Model Works down below. And uh, in addition, I just want to mention that I love the kit so much, I'm going to go ahead and feature it in its own video coming up next month, and Jason is going to join me for that, so it's going to be a fun project to work on, so stay tuned for that. And of course, there's always the vendor room, which we were talking with Tom in just a second ago there, filled with a lot of different vendors and people that are selling all kinds of interesting stuff. Uh, I uh, purchased, for example, this little 8-inch model of the Sea View. Uh, it's a resin cast, and it uh, just looked interesting to me. It was only 20 bucks. I figure I could try and make a diorama at it at some point. And just as last time, there's what I like to call the B9 room with this beautiful large replica of the Jupiter II, which was 3D printed, believe it or not. The whole thing was 3D printed. And uh, then there was uh, another display off to the other side of the room where you had yet another Jupiter II, a smaller scale with a beautiful interior. And, of course, there are the B9s there on display and uh, some other memorabilia from Lost in Space. And across the uh, hallway was another room filled with uh, other vendors and uh, uh, a few other people like uh, Rick Sternbach, you had a chance to meet him. Chase Masterson was there from Deep Space Nine. Um, you can see here just a bunch of interesting things including these large models of the Millennium Falcon and a walker. And uh, another thing to share with you is this little display here of some eagles from Space 1999. This is the Space 1999 Props and Ships Facebook group. As always, they brought up some eagles. The uh, display was a bit larger the last time. Of course, they limited in size a little bit this time around. But uh, again, just beautiful looking replicas of the Space 1999 ships. Just a few other things to share with you here before we close. I was able to attend a couple workshops this go around, and one was titled Anya's Workshop. Uh, Anya Shetanina is a talented figure painter who. Uh, is there to share her uh, experience with you and this one in particular went over how to paint hair and to provide other types of effects on the hair, highlights and all those sorts of things. And uh, following that was another one given by uh, a gentleman by the name of Randy Van Dyke who applies very realistic effects and uh, all through layering uh, to the skin and he started the workshop with showing some examples and just outstanding work so I can't wait to try that. I am going to be doing a video uh, that uh, incorporates his techniques and I got the permission from him to do that on my channel so uh, you'll get a chance to see my first attempt at trying it anyway. And then um, the other uh, talk I attended was given by a gentleman by the name of Dr. David West Reynolds and this is a very interesting gentleman who's a he has a PhD in archaeology and he um, uh, was influenced as you can imagine by Raiders of the Lost Ark. It was called the Archaeology of Raiders uh, and it was fascinating. You know, the one thing about Raiders of the Lost Ark is um, it has, it, it, obviously, is a movie that, you know, has locations throughout the world, so he did show some of the filming locations that he traveled to, but also the whole point of the lecture was to relate real-life things to the movie, um, whether they were actual real um, locations that uh, the movie had referenced or uh, different uh, mythologies and things uh, with regard to Egyptian... Um, uh, mythology and uh, I mean just all sorts of things that I'll never watch the movie the same way again so if you ever get to attend Wonderfest and he is giving a talk I'd highly recommend it you will not be disappointed and lastly I uh, won some awards actually I, I had a total of seven entries um, I intended to enter all of my Trek busts 
as one collection, but they didn't have a category for collections. So Ken Spriggs uh, suggested just entering them all separately, and they each were awarded a bronze, which I was really excited about because it's the first time I ever entered anything with, re with regard to figure painting anyway. And then I brought my Battlestar Galactica launch tube. Um, all of these were easy to transport since the Galactica launch tube is encased in that and that uh, display case, uh, it was easy, easy to wrap up and package both of them in one box, and that one won a bronze as well. Uh, two of the other awards that I was able to find out about, and I'm sure you can find out more about awards, uh, but I stumbled across this one on Facebook, is the, the Best Sci-Fi Ship Award was won by the Hammerhead, and there's this other award called Best Humor, and that was won by this R2-D2. Okay guys, well that is a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. Coming up now is the slideshow, and this is made up of pictures provided by Mark Fraley and Ken Spriggs. Uh, I want to thank them for allowing me to use their pictures. I am using their pictures because I had every intention on getting back to the model show, but didn't make it back in time after the panels. By the time I got there, uh, they were already closing down the show. I had every intention on taking my camera and going through uh, the, the different tables there, which you can, by the way, see video of. A lot of people have posted videos about Wonderfest already, so I'm providing some links down below uh, to some that I've come across if you'd like to see video like that. Uh, the show, on the other hand, like I said, includes these pictures from Mark and Ken, and uh, they do not include every single model from the show. I'm sorry if yours isn't featured here. Uh, they were all beautiful pieces, but I can only fit so much. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you then in the next video. Take care.